Phoenix, and just having a quick chat with uh, John Hathaway, the, one of the top performing uh, gold fund managers in the in the world, and we're just let's have a little quick conversation about gold stocks. Great. And uh, gold stocks really sort of underperformed uh, bullion over the last uh, little while or last mm -hmm. few years. Couple years. W why was it? I think it's uh, uh, the worries about a bear market and the fact that gold stocks are stocks and tend to perform with stocks and not and not uh, bullion. Um, they are riskier because they have business risk. Um, the ETF, the gold ETF, has made gold very accessible, so the need to own, so the gold mining stocks don't have a monopoly on people who are concerned about monetary debasement. I think that's right. been a big factor. Right. Um, the spread between cash cost and and the price of gold these days, it's it's, you know, watching how far gold has run has got to be. How, uh, advantageous to the balance sheets of these gold Huge, companies. Yeah, I mean the, the, the spread, I think the global cash cost number is something like eight hundred dollars and take sixteen hundred dollars, that's an eight hundred dollar spread. Um, that's that's unprecedented. And that's so at some point that would suggest that investments in the larger gold stocks are a pretty good idea. I think now. I think the, the, these companies will be gushing cash flow and they're gonna bump their dividends and uh, report record earnings, and I just think they're going to be too profitable to be missed out on by mm -hmm. not just people who are interested in gold, but uh, the generalist investor. Right. Now, here's a question. Your fund has outperformed all the relevant indexes for a, by a fairly wide margin, yet you're not really a trader. So how did you do it? What was your, is it stock selection? Is it... Uh, What's the secret sauce here? The secret sauce? Yeah. Uh, well, we have a big investment in research. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a, a good team of four analysts plus me. Mm -hmm. uh, we travel all over the world to look at gold mining assets in remote locations, whether it's the Arctic Circle or West yeah. Africa. I mean, we've been pretty much everywhere. Right. And that kind of gives us a pretty good lay of the land as far as the assets go. and, and uh, I think the big thing is that we're willing to invest in companies at an earlier stage of their uh, evolution than uh, most because we do have this kind of nitty-gritty um, uh, uh, feel for assets and at their earlier stages and so we'll we'll get involved with an Osisco for example when it was a 50 cent stock right it's now 14 and we finance them all along the way. And I, right. I think that makes a big difference. Which is a, a good lead into the next question, which is these the producers have, you know, it's it's a business where you deplete your your reserves on a daily basis mm -hmm. if you're doing things right. How are they going to replace their reserves, and does that does that point to an opportunity? I mean, is that are there are do you guys spend a lot of time looking at the companies that are most likely to get uh, to get acquired? Well, uh, certainly, uh, most years uh, we'll, we'll have a couple of takeovers, and hopefully they're, they're big positions in the portfolio. Right. And that certainly gives us, um, that certainly is a big factor in uh, um, our, our performance. But the other thing is, you know, we, we're very patient. We'll, we'll look at a company that may have made a misstep, but if we think the asset's any good, and if we think management is contrite, mm -hmm. or, or maybe new management comes in, um, the, the gold isn't going to go anywhere. I mean, it, it's right. there. And so uh, if they get things right, um, you're going to eventually see value created. So what keeps you up at night? I mean, you're, you're, you're primarily, well, you're not primarily, you're, you're heavily involved in this sector. You've been involved with it from, for some time now. 98, it's, it's, since 98. Yeah, 98, right, which is when we were jumping time. up and down. <laughs> yes, it's, it's been a hell of a, of a bull market. and. Uh, I mean, I can remember back in 2004 interviewing company executives, and even the guys in the business didn't think this could last. Uh, I can't see, we can't see at KC Research anything on the immediate horizon that's going to derail uh, gold and silver, hard assets in general. But, but there must be something. Do you do you stop and think once in a while, like what's going to, where's the torpedo going to come from? Like the Volcker's raise, raising interest rates. Well, it, it would be something like that. You you need to have political sea change. Uh, you need to have resolve um, and political will and not contentious um, opposing views like we have now. So now we have 
people who want to continue this um, welfare society that we have and, and don't want to cut back on, on those kinds of, um, that kind of spending. And then we have um, the, the fiscal hard liners and, and, and the clash is unbelievable. So it's very different than 1980. But I would say what you need is sort of unified political sea change where everybody got behind um, uh, a leader, a, a real leader, which we don't have either, right. um, who would tell the truth and, and say, you know, we're going to have a bunch of tough years right. to get this thing sorted out. Yeah, I think uh, Adam Ferguson makes the point very well in his book that there is never a good time to tackle a problem like we have now. And in fact, this would be the worst time to tackle this problem, to, to go th for austerity and for for you know the sort of things that you would need to do to mm -hmm. get the country back on a fiscal, uh, some sort of stability on a fiscal or a monetary standpoint, there's never a good time. And so the politicians, I think you, you called it, what was it, a welfare democracy? Welfare democracy. Uh, welfare democracy yeah. is a great line. That's what we have. Yeah, and so do you think the, uh, there's any chance that, they, that, that we're gonna see something like that coalesce in the next it's hard to see, but it's conceivable. But I think I think first we have to have more of uh, more of a financial uh, crisis. We have to have a repeat, which we may be in the midst of right now. I mean, what's right. going on in Europe seems to have no end to it. Right. And uh, one thing I didn't mention in my talk is uh, uh, Paul um, Tudor Jones, mm -hmm. uh, who is a terrific money manager and a great guy said that he thinks that uh, there's a good chance that the U.S. is going to have a sovereign debt crisis similar to Europe. Yeah, one would assume. I mean, then I, I think that's mm -hmm. right. But I think that out of that you would get some of the, the willingness to, to go through a tough period and just right. everybody buy into some kind of solution. Right. But it really takes leadership. So we've had a recent correction and uh, is this to you, do you, does it feel to you that we're, we're bottoming out here a little bit? I mean, things might bounce along, but. Yeah, you know, I'm not in the <coughs> business of, of, of making those calls. I don't, I don't right. like to, but, it, but uh, I feel like um, this was a pretty good wipeout. And um, the, certainly you've dampened a lot of the enthusiasm that right. was on the front page was only, gee, only six weeks ago. Right. So, you know, that's usually a good start. Okay, so you're a gold stock fund manager, <coughs> and so it would be expected you'd be talking your own book. Mm -hmm. So sure. the question is, what percentage of your portfolio do you have in gold, precious metals, silver stocks, this sort of thing, just generally speaking? Well, it's it's uh, it's over fifty percent. Really? Okay. And uh, but I don't recommend that. No. I just. I th feel like I know what I'm doing, so I'm right. well, at least gonna, you uh, that's what I'm going to do. But at least uh, you've got your money where your mouth is. Uh, my is. money is where my mouth is. That's that's very important. Good. All right. Well, that's all I've got. So thanks, thank David. You, thank you very much. Pleasure. Good.